Passport to the Internet is designed to teach internet literacy skills like online safety, ethics, and privacy management to grades 4 to 8. It's available through a licensing arrangement to ministries of education, school boards and divisions, and individual schools. Available in French and English, Passport is designed to mimic the online environments young people are already using. So it starts by letting students choose an avatar, who then appears in Internet Station, where they'll learn the skills they need to act safely and wisely online. Each part of the station represents a different online environment. Throughout the program, the Help tool tells students where everything is. Study Space teaches students how to research on the internet and learn if they can trust what they find. Coco's Choco Match shows how to recognize advertising in online environments like AdverGames. MyFace teaches privacy management skills by simulating social networking sites. WebCafe teaches students to think before they click. Instant Pigeon simulates an instant messaging program to teach students how to deal with issues such as stranger contact, uploading photos and videos, and cyberbullying. Let's start by looking at Web Cafe. Students need to learn how to judge if a link, email, banner ad, or search result is useful and reliable before clicking it. The waiter gives students advice, but in the end they must decide whether it's a good choice. Once they do, they are told whether they made the right decision and why. Students learn not just to recognize the signs that something is unreliable, but also to tell when something on the internet is legitimate, like this email from the student's mother. The online world is full of advertising, much of it aimed at kids. Coco's Choco Match simulates an advert game, a seamless blend of marketing and entertainment, and challenges students to identify which parts are trying to sell them something. As always, the help function gives important hints to help students succeed. Once students have decided that something on the page is advertising or not, they identify it by clicking it and choosing the X or check mark. To keep students on their toes, some of the items on the page aren't advertising, like this link to the site's privacy policy, and these must be correctly identified to pass the module. Well, study space has two parts. The first simulates a search engine, assigning students a research topic and asking them to find sources on it. As with a real search engine, just entering the most obvious keywords won't be very useful, resulting in page after page of irrelevant hits. Students quickly learn to use advanced search terms and tools to narrow down their search results and find only the most relevant sources. The second part of Study Space asks students to judge three websites and determine whether they are reliable, unreliable, or best used as sources of opinion. Rather than judging the whole page, students decide whether each element of the page is reliable, unreliable, or opinion. Again, the Help tool provides important information in helping the student decide. To provide further guidance, students have access to clear, simple definitions of each term. This link to a scientific journal, for instance, is a hint that this is a reliable site. MyFace teaches privacy management skills by letting students create a profile on a site similar to MySpace or Facebook. The Help tool gives hints on how to protect your privacy, for instance, suggesting that you use a cartoon instead of a photo as your profile picture. As students fill in the different parts of the profile, the program keeps track of how it affects their privacy score, adding or taking away points based on how much personal information the user is giving away. Social networking sites like Facebook let you customize your privacy levels, but research shows that few users bother to do it. The Help tool explains what each setting means and suggests the best level. To make sure that students learn about privacy settings, it's impossible to succeed at this module without adjusting them. Instant messaging is one of the most popular forms of online communication. In this module, students participate in chats with online buddies, learning how to deal with issues such as cyberbullying, stranger contact, and uploading and downloading files and photos. Once again, the help function provides advice about the decisions students have to make. Each conversation can lead in several different directions, 
based on the choices that are made, and each of which deals with a different issue. At the end of a conversation, students are told what they did right and wrong, and given the opportunity to try again or to chat with a different buddy. As students go through the modules, their progress is recorded on this passport. At any time, students can email their results so far, allowing teachers to track their progress. Passport to the Internet comes with a comprehensive teacher's guide, which includes pre-game backgrounders and activities, a detailed explanation of each module, troubleshooting sections, and extension activities. Teachers also have access to curriculum charts, which tell them how Passport fits in with their provincial or territorial curriculum. For more information on licensing Passport to the Internet, contact Media Awareness Network, media-awareness.ca, 1-800-896-3342 or 613-224-7721, licensing at media-awareness.ca.